Hey, what's up everyone? Just when I thought we were starting to get over the whole sweetener boogeyman, here comes the who with this ridiculous statement from the top of the turnbuckle. Now, let me be clear. I'm a, new, I'm a personal trainer, but I'm no expert on this particular subject. I'm just a former fat guy that likes to help others get into shape. And I've read some things. I highly encourage everyone to read the article. It's not that long. And come to your own conclusions. This is just my take on the matter. With those caveats out of the way, here are a few choice quotes. Quote, NSS or non-sweetened sugars are not essential dietary factors that have no nutritional value. People should reduce the sweetness of the diet altogether starting early in life to improve their health. End quote. Having no nutritional value does not mean unhealthy or damaging in some way. In fact, this is precisely what makes non-nutritive sweeteners useful to us. Is it better to not have a sweet tooth than to have a sweet tooth? Probably, especially if you have an inclination towards simple sugar sweets. But there's nothing wrong with these simple sugars for the person that can properly moderate that intake, which many, many people do every day. Quote, a better alternative to the use of artificial sweeteners is to reduce consumption of manufactured products containing free sugars such as sugar sweetened beverages to use raw or lightly processed fruit as a source of sweetness and perhaps in the longer term to try to reduce one's overall taste for sweetness, end quote, he said. Now, this isn't necessarily bad advice. It depends on who you are. If you're someone that doesn't really struggle with having a sweet tooth and is concerned with weight loss or excuse me, weight management, yes, it's probably better for you to build the habit of getting your glucose from whole sources such as fruits that blunt the glycemic response through the fiber content of the fruit. The whole fruit, not just the juice. But if you're someone struggling with weight loss because you have a sweet tooth like I used to and still kind of do, telling someone they shouldn't use a non nutritive sweetener as a tool to help address those, address those cravings is just stupid. It's like telling Batman not to use the grappling hook in his utility belt because he'd be a better overall crime fighter if he maxed out his cardiovascular fitness by taking the stairs every time some woman was being sexually assaulted at the 50th floor of Trump Tower. Sorry if that's too political. Not really. Quote, The new guideline follows a 2019 review by Cochrane, an international nonprofit research group that concluded there was no evidence for health benefits from NSSs while potential harms could not be excluded. However, the experts involved in that review stressed the evidence analyzed was not very robust. A concern also flagged for the WHO work. End quote. Considering everything the WHO is, excuse me, considering everything that WHO has been through in the past several years regarding the COVID pandemic and the criticisms it's faced and is still facing, to put out a statement like this when your own experts are telling you there's essentially insufficient evidence for your guidelines, just it beggars belief. Authoritative institutions around the globe are struggling with their credibility to the detriment of our modern social cohesion and you release something like this? It's like the pandemic taught them absolutely nothing. They're children that keep touching the hot stove. Quote, among the review's limitations, Professor Nita Farohi, I apologize if I'm butchering that, MRC Epidemiology Unit, University of Cambridge, noted the short duration of most of the randomized controlled trials and low certainty of the evidence. Most of the trials did not explicitly compare the replacement of sugar consumption with NSS, and NSS were considered as a class of compounds collectively without distinguishing between individual types. End quote. Enough said. Quote. The role of non-sugar sweeteners as a way to reduce calories in the short term is, however, supported by evidence. So using sweeteners can be part of an excuse me, so using sweeteners can be part of interventions to manage weight in the short term, she said. End quote. Now please tell me, if something is good enough to manage weight in the short term, and you have insufficient evidence suggesting that something is damaging long term. Why can that something not be used for long-term weight management if it's good for short-term weight management? Is there some causal metabolic mechanism that changes after some critical weight loss threshold? Is there data that supports some negative effects in regards to time? At 12 o'clock a.m. on the 90th day of someone's weight loss journey, does their stevia box turn into a pumpkin? None of these things are expressed or addressed in the guideline or the previous guideline. 
This is embarrassing, especially in the context of the current criticisms that the Who is facing. Don't demonize non-nutritive sweeteners and don't give these silly sensational articles the time of day that do. These are some of the most thoroughly studied substances on the planet and have been for, the, for at least 30 years. And the overwhelming majority of the nutritional data science says that they're safe. Anecdotally, if it weren't for these sweeteners, there's a good chance that I'd still be 300 pounds and diabetic, today of which I'm neither. Use every tool available in your toolbox when it comes to managing your weight. Thanks for listening.